Hi everyone, and welcome to Insight. In today's day and age, it is relatively easy to get aerial photographs and video with current drone technology. If you're a photographer and you want to get an aerial perspective of something, it's easy to do so if you buy one of the many camera-based drones that are available on the market. And while it's still a bit of an expense, it is something that any amateur photographer and videographer can do if they set their mind to it. But did you know that aerial photography has been around for a very long time? People have always been fascinated with the idea of getting an aerial perspective and they went to all sorts of lengths to capture images from up above. In this video, I'm going to do a brief history of aerial photography and some of the crazy things that people did in order to see what things look like from up in the air. So if you're interested, stay tuned and I'll be right back. So welcome back. The idea of aerial imagery has been around for a very long time. All sorts of techniques have been used to get images from up in the air, including fixed wing aircraft, helicopters, unmanned aerial vehicles, balloons, blimps, dirigibles, rockets, pigeons, kites, parachutes, etc, etc, etc. According to the Professional Aerial Photographers Association, the father of aerial photography was French balloonist Gaspard Philippe Tournachon, who photographed Paris from a hot air balloon way back in 1858. Unfortunately, none of his work remains today. So the title of oldest surviving aerial photograph is Boston as the eagle and the wild goose see it. This photo was taken by photographer James Wallace Black in October of 1860 from an altitude of about 2,000 feet. Another early aerial photographer, George Lawrence, later perfected a method of taking panoramas from above by strapping large format cameras with curved film plates to kites. His most famous photograph captured the damage caused by the devastating 1906 San Francisco earthquake and fire. To get this image, he used 17 kites to suspend the camera 2,000 feet in the air to record the image. Exposures were made by electric current carried through the insulated core of the steel cable kite line. The moment the shutter snapped, a small parachute was released. At this signal, the picture was taken, the kites were pulled down, and the camera reloaded. And then there was Julius Neubrunner. He was curious about his prescription delivering pigeons' whereabouts. So he strapped cameras to his birds to track their routes. Neubrunner filed a patent for these miniature cameras that could be worn by pigeons and would be activated by a timing mechanism. Neubrunner also used his birds to take photos of the 1909 Dresden International Photographic Exhibition and turned them into postcards. Pigeons were also used by the French to capture the position of the German army in the First World War, most notably at the Battle of Verdun and the Battle of the Somme. And with World War I, military commanders soon saw the potential advantage offered by up-to-date aerial imagery of the battlefield. So cameras were mounted on aircraft and the wartime practice of aerial reconnaissance was born. And as the war progressed, advancements in both aviation and photography meant flight crews could go farther and come back with useful images which were often used to reveal enemy movements or plan future attacks. Some historians have speculated that without aerial imagery, World War I would have been very different. Generals would have no idea of the enemy's position, wouldn't be able to plan targets to fire at, and would have no idea of what was happening on the other side of no man's land, separating opposing trench lines. If we fast forward to today, we can see how much aerial photography has advanced. Over the past five years or so, the technologies used in drones have made it possible for almost anyone to capture amazing aerial photographs and videos. There's no doubt that drones are the technological marvels of the last 10 years. Beyond just getting beautiful images, drones can document disasters without putting additional people at risk. They can help in rescue missions, 
they can help farmers with monitoring their crops as well as many other practical applications. So the next time you're out flying your drone, just remember how long it took to get here. Numerous technological advancements, mass production, as well as a growing consumer demand have all come together to make your beautiful aerial images and videos possible. I hope you enjoyed this brief history of aerial photography. Before you go, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. It costs you nothing and it'll really make my day. So until next time, take care and safe flying.